We're going to stay on the air for as long as possible. All we can say is what we've been repeating all morning. Get to any kind of underground shelter. So the purpose of today's video is, is that if you are planning to grow stuff, grow stuff other than just like your normal tomatoes and other normal vegetables like that, if it, a lot of things, if you plan on to grow stuff after SHTF, a lot of these things that you want to get started now beforehand. A lot of these things, some several different things that you can grow after SHTF, sometimes they take several years before they will actually start producing fruit or producing food that you can actually eat. These raspberry bushes here, these larger ones like this, we're actually here last year. I think this is the third year for them. Last year, these larger ones were here and actually produced a little bit of fruit for us, but not a whole lot. But all of these smaller ones that you see in the bed, all of these little small ones, down there, down there, down here, down there, down there, these are all new this year. If you're not familiar with how raspberry bushes operate or work, I guess you call it, is these plants, well, actually their root will go under now underground and pop up as a new plant a foot or so away. So in essence, you can actually start off with one raspberry bush and then over a couple of years time, you can have multiple raspberry bushes. So that's just another thing that if you or plan on growing raspberry bushes at your bug out location, you might wanna go ahead and get them started now. That way, if SHTF happens in the future, you could have a good bunch of them. Now, one thing I like about raspberry bushes is they have all these little thorns on them, and these can make a natural, or you can make, use these to make a natural barrier. Now, obviously, if I was using these as a net, I mean, this is my backyard, so I don't want to make them a, a natural barrier. But along with using these as a natural barrier, you can actually use these, you know, plants like this that produce food and have thorns. You can actually use these where they force people to go where you want them, where you could actually use these to funnel people into a kill zone. Um, Make sure I'm articulating this correctly. If you are trying to make your retreat, your bug out location defendable, you can use these, of course, a lot more of them. I mean, a, a thicker bed of them, I guess you call them. Um, you can use these to force people to go where you want them to go and force them into a kill zone, which would be in range of whatever firepower that you have or booby traps or whatever you use your imagination to uh, defend your bug out location with. Besides these raspberry bushes, I'm also gonna look at mulberry bushes. And I believe it, it was subscriber Tom M that actually brought those up a uh, year or two years ago or something like that. But I guess they produce some berries and they have some pretty good thorns on them too that you could also use to act as a uh, natural barrier to help protect your property or to use it um, again in tactics again to protect your property but these things will even pop out from underneath the bed from underneath the bed I mean they just the roots will just travel underground and just pop up so you can see here's one here here's some new ones here <clears throat> here's some over here now these will be these will be naturally kept down just by a uh, simple mowing but uh, a great plant because uh, uh, again during the spring and the fall they will produce berries raspberries you can make jams jellies eat them as the berry uh, just a lot of different things that you can make with them but another good example of where you're wanting to 
you know, get stuff started beforehand is like this grapevine here. Now, this is early April, and so things haven't really started taking off yet. They are really just now starting to show signs of life again because it is early April. I don't know if you can <clears throat> see the little buds that's starting to appear on the grapevine here. But this grapevine, this is going on its third year. The first year of this grapevine just barely lived. The second year the grapevine grew out like it has, but it did not produce the first grape. So now what I'm hoping of is this third year that it will actually produce grapes this year. That's my hopes, we'll find out. But my point that I'm trying to make here in this video is if I'm trying to do plants like this and being dependent on plants like this to survive, I would die of starvation before a lot of this stuff actually started producing fruit. Now obviously I just wouldn't plan on a handful of raspberry bushes and one or two grapevines to try to eat on after SHTF. Uh, but my point is is that as soon as you can possibly can you want to get this stuff started so that if SHTF does happen you will be able to eat this stuff will be producing food by that point obviously unless it happens tomorrow or in the next week or something like that now for you folks that uh, plan on doing guerrilla gardening after SHTF you know, and I've said this in another video is what area are you planning on doing this gorilla gardening? And have you already planted stuff there so that if SHTF happens a month from now or a year from now or two years from now, that the gorilla gardening is already producing fruit or vegetables, not vegetables, but whatever edible stuff because you don't want SHTF to happen you to go to your bug out location being dependent on a gorilla garden that you are just now starting and that has no uh, food on it to eat yet and I would caution against purely thinking you're going to live off of wild edibles until that time happens this is from my understanding and I'm no expert but from my understanding most wild e uh, edibles aren't are not that calorie dense They'll produce, you know, some of them are good for medicines. A lot of them are good for flavoring. A lot of them are good for extra nutrients. But they're not the bulk of your meal. They're not going to be enough calories to keep you alive. So again, it's early April. It's not safe yet to plant. I got my garden beds ready. So in my area, Mother's Day is the date. Any day after Mother's Day, it's super duper rare to ever get a overnight frost that would kill your plants off. So I'm just waiting on Mother's Day. That's a little bit over a month from now. Also, my strawberry plants have done very well so far. They survived the winter. So I planted these last spring in this garden bed. And they grew throughout the summer. And then they just sat here during the winter. And I did not know if they would survive or not, but they have. And now it's early spring, and they're green, and they're getting flowers. And of course, where those flowers are, will end up being strawberries. Now, I am going to end up putting about two or three more pl plant strawberry plants. I'm going to get new strawberry plants and put two to three new plants in each square that you see. So I will be adding... 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, at least 20 more plants to this portion of this bed here. And I think they're called June bearing strawberry plants. These are not the ones that I want, but I'm going to get the ones where the leaves actually kind of, or the stems actually kind of spider out and then plant new roots and produce a new strawberry plant. That's be more of a kind of a plant that a strawberry plant that will keep reproducing itself where the older ones just die off like natural and then they're always making new ones so that would be a sustainable way I think and I could be wrong but hopefully a sustainable way of uh, having uh, strawberry plants or 
almost endless supply of strawberries. So folks, the main point of this video was just all about on a lot of these plants, or numerous different plants should I say, that if you plan on growing them or, or using them to feed you after SHTF, you possibly want to get those planted as soon as possible because a lot of them, so many of them, that's not your traditional vegetables, may take two or three years before they start producing. And you don't want to starve or be lacking on vital nutrients or whatever until those things actually do start producing food. And if you would like to learn about an off-grid cooking stove that only costs $20, a lightweight stove that will fit in your bug out bag and you can also cook with it without using gas or charcoal, then click on the video that should be appearing at the top of the screen just about now to learn more about that. And if you would like to learn how you can find and join a pre-existing prepper group or even to start your own prepper group so that you have a better chance of survival after SHTF, then click on the video that should be appearing on the right side of the screen just about now. Anyways, folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching. And I pray that you have a good night.